Good morning, y'all. My name is Rose Luna. I'm the CEO of the Texas Association Against Sexual Assault. Oh my gosh, thank y'all so much for joining us. This is our, I think, third installment of TASA Talks, the 87th. Oh God, we've had a great week. I can't, we can't wait to talk to y'all about it. But just a quick reminder, TASA Talks, the 87th. We chose this platform, y'all, because we got so many requests from our membership and from our stakeholders that they just wanted to learn more about the legislative process. What does it mean to go from A to B to C all the way to Z? And where are we with the laws that affect survivors of sexual assault? So we thought that we would put together this this uh, platform to do so. So if you want to catch our first two, we have a YouTube channel. Eve, I think there's even like a channel within the channel. <laughs> I know that's not the right technical terms. Um, that's called Tasa Talks. So please feel free to go back and review those. Um, but yeah, so that's why we're here today. And as always, I'm so excited and proud to be joined by Tasa's two senior policy advisors. They are the one creating all the magic at the Capitol this session. So excited to have them uh, with us today. So Kristen and Catherine, excited to have y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Um, well, y'all, we've had a great week. Wouldn't y'all agree? Like this has been a really good week. Um, so I'll start with first the ED conference. We just wrapped up the ED conference uh, yesterday and it was it was a very uh, successful conference. We had really great speakers. Crystal Garcia from our staff, she worked with TCFE staff and they just did a really great job. I, I do wanna uh, commend TCFE for the platform. Uh, they managed to figure out how to create this virtual space where we feel connected. Like, I didn't think that was possible. And whatever they used, I think it was called Remo or something, may, in my opinion, made it happen. So huge kudos and congratulations to TCFE uh, and also to the staff who worked on it and, and from our staff, Rick Gifridge and uh, Crystal Garcia. Um, so what was happening at the same time, though, y'all, is so all of our funding comes through the Office of the Attorney General, the sexual assault pot of the money anyway. And so Senate Finance was having some hearings uh, starting this week. And I just have to say that from the get-go, uh, it was just very positive for, for sexual assault funding. Uh, when the Attorney General himself was uh, there to defend the, the budget, um, it was just very promising when uh, Senate Finance leader, which is uh, Jay Nelson, Senator Nelson, when she, the first question she asks is about 5010. 5010, uh, that's a pot of money that TASA back in the day under the leadership of Annette Burris Clay, Lawrence College was a part of TASA back then, uh, Tory Camp, uh, Chris Kaiser, they worked really hard to get that piece of legislation passed. It was another funding stream. Um, and so she asked about that immediately. We all know that now, when you fast forward to now, there are some issues with uh, with that solvency and with uh, structural issues with that. So, so that's the first question she asked the actual attorney general. So I just think it's really, that was a really positive thing for us. Um, so I went yesterday and testified. Oh my God, y'all. I mean, it's, I, first of all, please everybody go testify. Second of all, don't be like Rose and just be stressed to the max and get there and lose it. Um, but I was super nervous. Oh my God, I was super nervous. Uh, I don't even know why, because I speak in front of everybody. I speak in front of anything and everybody, but I think it was a culmination. I think what they saw yesterday was a true depiction of the lay, lay of the, the land ED, just stressed to the max, trying to make it all work and has a breaking point at some point. But I will say this, they were very, very nice. And uh, the, the, what, the one thing I heard loud and clear from them, they, they're interested in the issue. They, we have champions there, not only on the Senate Finance Committee, but really across the board of elected officials that we've dealt with. Um, and what I think is so interesting is that when you can't tell if someone's a Republican or a Democrat because they're sticking to the issue, that's when you know you've done your job. And that's exactly what we've done at TASA. So right now, speaking of Senate Finance, I do want to say that um, God, Senator Nelson is, it, it just blew my mind with how much support and how much she even just uttered the words rape crisis center, sexual assault survivor yesterday. So I was very, very happy. Um, with that, Senator Colcourse mentioned uh, rape crisis center and so did Senator Huffman. So I just shout out to the women on that committee. And again, not that the men didn't, but they actually just uttered the words and 
somebody has, who's been in the movement for a long time to, to hear that uh, if we've been outside looking in. It's just really great. So again, wrapping it, wrapping it up, it was a very positive week for us. Senate Finance had their hearings. Sexual assault was up front and center. So that's, a, that's thanks to a lot of the work that Kristen and Catherine and Liz has done. And also for you all with the videos and kind of keeping the pressure on. That's the one thing we hear from all of them is keep the pressure in as far as letting them know the reality of sexual assault. So I'm very excited about that. But we also have some other great things happening. And I think, Kristen, were you going to talk about SART next? I'm so excited about this. Um, I am so excited to tell everyone that one of TASA's big priorities, which is around the development of sexual assault response teams, was taken up and filed by, again, Senator Nelson uh, from Tarrant and Denton counties. And so we, we are just so thrilled that this priority is being addressed. And this is going to be SB 476 for those people that like to go online and read and read bills. And what this does is it addresses um, the formation of collaborative community response teams for adult rape victims in Texas counties. So Texas counties over a certain size are going to be required to bring together all of the stakeholders, including advocates, forensic examiners, prosecution, mental and behavioral health, and law enforcement to form protocols for responding to sexual assault in a collaborative way. And what we love about this is that we know right now um, victims are so frequently re-traumatized by the process, by reporting, by making an outcry. Seeking services is arduous, it's time consuming, and it's often not collaborative. And so what we what we hope to achieve with this, with this priority is to ensure that no victim gets left behind when they reach out for help. And that uh, the parties are working together, they're talking to each other, and they're using their resources effectively. Um, so we're just, we're really thrilled about it. If you're interested in supporting it, please reach out to us. We can let you know when it um, hopefully gets a hearing. So thank you, Rose. Yeah, thanks. So that's so exciting. Again, I just wanna reiterate that it's with everything that's changed with the pandemic, it's really hard to even get your name in the building. And I, again, with the Senate Finance Committee and Rape Crisis Centers coming up so much, and then also with the work of Kristen and Catherine and getting some bills even through the process is huge, huge. So congratulations again, and thank you, Kristen. Catherine, I know you have some things that you'd like to share with us as well. Yeah, it's so exciting to be mid-February when it's incredibly cold and gloomy outside and there's <laughs> such good news to share, I think particularly during session. Uh, it's so nice. Um, so I know everyone had a busy week with the executive director conference, um, but next week we kick off virtual capital days. So those of you who have been around for a while, you know that every February 14th, usually, um, TCFE and TASA have their combined capital advocacy days on Valentine's Day around love shouldn't hurt. Um, and we usually have a rally and a march to the Capitol. We have some amazing speakers. And then we go inside and everyone goes and speaks to their own lawmakers about what's happening in the field and what they need from state lawmakers in order to effectively serve survivors. And because we can't do that this year, we have been working really hard to figure out how to do that exact same thing, but digitally in a way that doesn't feel like Zoom burnout, um, but still feels like we're really effectively connecting with lawmakers and with each other. So the way that we're going to do that is next week, um, starting Monday morning, we will have a coffee kickoff and then we will have an amazing press conference with um, our fearless leaders, Rose and Gloria, and some other amazing lawmakers and survivors. And then the amazing uh, Loretta Ross will be giving our keynote in the afternoon, which I'm so excited about. I've seen her speak before and she's just oh, so powerful and so great. I'm really excited. Um, and then on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we hope that you have already arranged to meet with your lawmakers, um, set up those appointments. Everybody's getting pretty busy. If you haven't yet, um, all of that information should be in the Capital Days notifications that we've sent out. If you haven't gotten those, you can just ping us at policy at um, and we'll send you all of those materials. 
Um, and then we will end everything with a happy hour. And um, that should keep us pretty busy for the next week. But I didn't know if Rose or Kristen, if you had anything else you wanted to add about Capital Day. I heard that there's a really cold drink or something that we're all gonna try. <laughs> or what is what is Courtney doing? <laughs> there's something, I'm doing something amazing. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna join for that reason to see what's going on with the <laughs> there's some fun stuff happening at the happy yeah, hour. We think that the happy hour should be a really fun activity and a way to like wrap up and process the week. We have a couple of cool things planned. And I was, I'll just say this, you know, I think, you know, when Niave, Representative Niave, you know, she was very generous with her time and closed out the conference for us. Uh, and again, just in case some of you are not from the field that are listening, it was the executive director conference. It's called Directing the Work. It's basically your, our local sexual assault and domestic violence program leaders coming together. And they, they normally come to Austin, but of course we came together virtually. TCP had this amazing platform that still felt like we were kind of together. It's weird, but it, I mean, weird in a good way. Um, I loved it. So um, that was the conference. And so she closed it out for us. And it was just really great. But the one thing that the message, the main message that I got from her is that they do want to hear from the programs. They want to hear what's going on. What's the wait list like? What's, you know, what do you need? Tell me a little bit more about this issue. Tell me about the, the plight of the survivor. Like I used to think that was something they didn't want to hear, but I was wrong again. <laughs> um, what I heard loud and clear from them is that they do want to hear this. So we appreciate you making those appointments, letting them know they, they want to know. And right now, everyone, not everyone, but they are talking about this issue. Uh, if, if the Senate finance um, OAG hearing did anything, it just let me know that we have some champions and some supporters there at the Capitol that care about the issue of sexual assault, those who work on their behalf. And, it's, and, and most importantly, they care about those in Texas who have been sexually assaulted. So I think we'll have a great, a great capital week describing that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, is there anything else? I, I, I think that, you know, uh, we again had a wonderful week. We're going to continue to keep track of what's happening uh, at the Capitol. Tasa talks the 87th. We're going to continue to track our bills. Continue to have those educational sessions and and uh, conversations with the elected officials. But again, just wanted you all to know that. The, the hard work that has been laid for years is coming into fruition and the hard work that has been laid since um, the interim with our policy team is now you know laid out very nicely for us to go in and kind of kind of bring home the message and that's exactly what we're going to do we're working on your behalf we know that you all are stretched thin out there we know that you need the funding we know that there's wait lists and so we appreciate all the information that you've given us so that we can relay that over to the elected officials and really encourage you to do the same. They want to hear from you and we hope that you can do that. So yeah. And with that being said, is, is that everything? Do we have anything else to add? All right. Well, thank y'all for joining us and we will see you in a couple of weeks.